Hello everybody, welcome back to Not Another Isekai. I'm Tyler, and this is of course a show all about this season's anime. Um, all the ones we're watching, and all of the, maybe not all, but <laughs> usually at least a few of the just garbage isekai that come out every season. Um, this this season though, we didn't we didn't do too many. We didn't do too many, which, you know, is par for the course because they're usually garbage. So why would we stick with them? Although there there, there is a couple, and there's actually one today, right? I guess it's technically like a reverse isekai though. Um, but we did keep one. We did keep one. So there you go. Not not all of them are that bad. Um, yeah, this this is probably gonna be like the shortest episode I've ever done. And the reason is because first, if you watched last week, um, you'll know that a few of the shows finished. So I think Bochi the Rock, um, Do It Yourself, and Mob Cycle all finished. So that's, that's three knocked right off, right? This season, this uh, week, there are three, <laughs> three shows that I would have liked to have done, but they all got delayed. Um, I guess probably because of the new year? Didn't really know that was a thing. I don't know if, like, holidays are a thing where anime gets delayed. I guess I've heard of it happening sometimes, but um, didn't know that New Year's is, like, the day, <laughs> the week where they delay all the anime. So, I'm going to be covering four episodes today. Only four of them, but they're, they're four relatively good ones. So, And a couple of them are the very end. Actually, almost all of them are. <laughs> um, so, let's start. First, we got Spy Family Season 2, Episode 13, or Episode, I guess, 25, 26 of the whole, what, what, what they're calling, like, the first, like, run, I guess. Um, episode 13, so this will be the last one, this is the last one, and uh, not too much to say, um, this did, didn't really end in, like, a huge cliffhanger, um, but... It did end in a way where it's like, okay, we're making some progress on this strict stuff. Um, so first off, I mean, I mean, pretty much the whole thing is about Damien and his, his relationship with everything. Um, so at the very beginning, it just kind of reinforces the idea that Damien and the Desmond family, they're not very close with each other. Um, you know, uh, up until this point, you could have already gleaned that. <laughs> you know, it, was, it, it wasn't too difficult, but... You know, even that call that he had with his brother, you know, just, you know, just like the language and just like the the verbal body language almost of that call was very awkward, very uncomfortable and, um, you know, very stiff. And then even the fact that he has to ask, he has to go through his older brother to ask his dad to like, meet him for just just a few minutes, you know, just just want to talk, catch up, that sort of thing. Um you know, it just, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird, you know, obviously, you know, some families are like that, but, um, you know, you can tell how much Damien really wants, really admires his dad, and, you know, really just wants some sort of recognition from him, you know, some sort of, like, pat on the back type stuff, and <clears throat> he's just never in a position where he's able to get it, you know, because even, like, you know, it, it, it might be kind of dumb, but, you know, which he does mention in this, this episode, you know, towards the end, but he did get, like, first place in that, like, uh, the, like, arts and crafts thing, you know, they got gold, gold medal, right, you know, that might seem kind of dumb, but it is something, you know, it, you know, first is first, right, <laughs> and so, you know, even that, he'd want his dad to know, because, you know, that's like, it's like a kid thing, I mean, you know, you, you forget they are Edens, right, they are supposed to be, like, the next leaders of the world, <laughs> Um, but they are still kids, you know, how, how old are they? They're like, they're like in early elementary school, right? Still, you know, still in the single digits when it comes to age. So, you know, of course they want some sort of acknowledgement from <laughs> their parents who are up until this point have been their whole world. Um, and then later on, you know, we just really get towards the end of the episode, um, which is really like the whole second half of it, but, um, where we have the Lloyd and... Mr. Damien, not, not Damien, uh, the, the, the Desmond chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, right off the bat, I'm like, Lloyd, Lloyd's a killer, 
you know, like the way he set this whole thing up, the way he can mask his face, um, and just like, you know, whenever it cuts to what he's really thinking, um, it's just like, this man is, is Twilight. <laughs> Outside is Lloyd, inside is Twilight. Um, and then, you know, basically, you know, not, not too specific here, but basically he just tells a bunch of lies, some like half-truths, but mostly lies, uh, you know, on, on part of Anya to try to get in with the Damien Desmond family. Um, talks about like admiration, um, maybe hams up the relationship and the the wanted relationship that Anya would want with with Damien um you know kind of plays to that because for us at least and you know I'm sure Lloyd too because like you know he has Twilight so <laughs> you know this is kind of his job to like read people but um you know at least to us it is very clear that Damien's playing this like uh this like Sundere type character um and so, like, you know, kind of playing to that feeling, those feelings of his is super smart by Lloyd. Um, and then also that whole thing then gets looked upon by the father. And the father's like, okay, okay, okay. You know, you, you can tell by the end of it, though, that he was still super, I mean, just, you know, just in general, you know, even Lloyd said that, that, you know, Mr. Desmond is super cautious just when it comes to life, um, you know, probably because of how high of a seat that he has. Um but, uh, yeah, you, you can tell by the end of it, you know, even just the very least of Lloyd, Lloyd's name being remembered, you know, so that, like, he knows my name, he's going to remember my name, you know, so that, like, if we ever talk again, we have something to launch off of rather than there just being some wild meeting and coincidence and be like, hey, you remember me? And he's like, no, <laughs> you know, um. I mean, even even when they met, he was like, oh, yeah, you're yeah, I heard about that with, um, you know, the the kid, um, you know, Anya. <laughs> but to him, he didn't really know, you know, the the kid punching his son. <laughs> um, you know, so there are, you know, there's little things, you know, that's that that's really all Lloyd has to do. You know, it's, it, it's not going to be done right here. You know, the mission is not going to be completed right here, right now. So he just has to eke in, you know, you know, put some fingers in some pies, you know. Um, and yeah, I think he's doing a good job of that. Um, yeah, that's, you know, like I said, there's no real big cliffhanger that is just kind of how it ends. Um, but that is progress. You know, we have struggled with that. I feel like, you know, I've talked about this before where most, sh most episodes of the show don't really focus on the, the operation Strix too much. Um, you know, which is fine. You know, I don't think... The majority of readers who read the manga and now now that there's an anime we got the anime watchers as well um you know i don't think we necessarily like super care about strix it's interesting whenever it comes up you know you know i think this this episode is a really good episode you know because we finally get to see the man the myth the legend and how he kind of interacts and how he inter how he bounces off of someone like lloyd and how like he obviously doesn't know who lloyd is but because of his nature he is kind of blocking every sort of advance that Lloyd has, you know, so Lloyd has to take a different approach and he goes after Damien, plays to his sensibilities and gets that father son relationship that, you know, is, is somewhat strained, somewhat distant, but it is still there. You know, um, you know, I, you know, I feel like the man still cares about his son. So it works. Um, but yeah. And so we'll see, you know, I don't, I don't know if a season three has been confirmed or not, um, there probably will be one. I imagine this show did very well. Um, you know, I know it's both seasons got pretty good scores, uh, you know, critically, um, you know, it, both seasons were like two of the most watched shows that's in, in, you know, in the respective season. So I imagine it'll probably get more, you know, I mean, also Spy Family, it's, it's tough because a lot of the times, you know, anime are made to sell the manga. And it's funny because, uh, you know, something like Sp Spy Family or even other shows that are going to adapt it. It's like, well, they're already super popular manga. So I don't really know if the anime is like <laughs> keeping the manga afloat, you know. And then even something later on that we'll talk about Chainsaw Man. It's like, I'm pretty sure the manga doesn't need an anime to be successful, you know. Um, 
but 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 you know that that just gives you more hope where it's like okay we don't really need to care about that we just hope that the show does well and if it does then we'll keep making it so i hope hope we get more because it's it's good um next my hero academia season six episode 14 um i would love to talk about this but i did not watch it and that is not because of my own <laughs> my own negligence uh, the episode got delayed Episode got delayed. Remember when I said that at the top of the show? Episode got delayed. This is the first this first show that that happened to, I guess, because of the holiday. I don't know. So I'll cover that next time. Next, Blue Lock, episode 13. Uh, again, another show I'd love to talk about. I love Blue Lock. It's incredible. Um, but this one also got delayed, I guess, because of the holiday. Um, again, you know, the, these past two shows, My Hero, Blue Lock, they're really, really good. And uh, I'm sad. I'm sad you're not, you're not, we're not able to watch them. But, uh, you know, it just means next week. And next week it'll be full. Um, <clears throat> next we get to an episode that actually did air. We got The Eminence in Shadow, episode 13. This is a show... I'll be honest. <laughs> I have lost the thread. I don't know if I said that last time. Um, I was definitely saying that to myself <laughs> when I was watching the episode. I was just like, I've, I've lost the thread on this show. I don't, I don't know what it's about anymore. Um, you know, I thought it was supposed to be about Lord Shadow being a background character and becoming Lord Shadow again, becoming the eminence in Shadow. And now we're at this weird spot where it's like, like he sort of already revealed himself back at like episode 10, I think, right? And now stuff is just kind of happening. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't understand, like... It's cool because we are getting deeper into some of these other groups, you know, like the Sanctuary was, I'm pretty sure the Sanctuary was mentioned, like, I don't know, like episode five or something. We didn't really think too much of it because it was like, oh, who cares? Um, but now it is coming back around, you know, so we, we are getting this sort of like payoff from these things that were mentioned earlier on. But I don't really know what has made us like care about them. You know, like, there has to be some sort of connection, some sort of emotional thread there. I don't really feel like there is one. Like, this whole episode is Shadow and Aurora, and it's like, the first 11 episodes, we didn't really know who Aurora was, and now she appears last episode. Um, and it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> and now it's like this whole journey, and I'm like, oh, well, why do we care, you know? Um, you know, we care about Lord Shadow, but even Lord Shadow just seems like a, like, he's outside of the story. Like, the story's happening, and he's just kind of along for the ride. Um, you know, I remember there was even a time where, towards the end of this episode, Aurora and the, the old knight man were talking, and it was like, uh, it was, it was, it, it, it felt like the climax of this arc. You know, not the Lord Shadow arc, but the Aurora arc, and instead of focusing on them, they, the camera does a really good job at having Aurora be in the foreground, but be out of focus, and then having Lord Shadow be in the background and in focus, and he's just kind of like daydreaming, he's, he's just like thinking about other stuff, <laughs> and I guess that's intentional, like, you know, that's, I guess, what we have to maybe... Again, because, like, we have the last few episodes where, you know, I was talking about how, like, stuff is just happening. There's lots of fan service. I don't understand how this is connected to the to the Lord Shadow um, motivations. And I was thinking, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe they're doing this on purpose. You know, maybe this is intentional and they're just making this story where it's just proving more and more of how above everything Lord Shadow is. Where it's, like, these crazy big stories that might be the main you know force and another anime are just like a side thing to him and if that's the case that is clever but i'm not convinced that that's what they're doing because then you even have people who are close to him who we did grow up with and was like you know again <laughs> the shadow garden you got El you know alpha beta delta all that stuff like they are in the story you know like they are going through and you know, you know, trying to discover the secrets of the sanctuary, you know, Oliver's there, like, so they're a part of the story, but he's not, like, I don't, 
I, I don't know what's going on. You know, so like I was saying, Lord Shadow and Aurora, they're in the sanctuary with a bunch of zombies. And again, you know, even the way Lord Shadow talks, he's talking like <laughs> this is some like video game where he's like, oh, yeah, we're doing this thing. Of course, it's zombies. We got to kill them, blah, blah, blah. And just like his nonchalantness with it. Again, he is overpowered. So he did kind of have those feelings throughout the show up until this point. But it felt like, like <laughs> he, you know, I feel like he was still part of the story because he was trying to make a story surrounding this ideal that he was just a background character. And now he actually feels like a background character, but as Lord Shadow. So it's, it's very weird. Um, and then Shadow killed young Aurora, uh, which is cool. I'm sure, you know, had some crazy thing to do with her character. Uh, they found this crazy sword that you can't pull. Um, and again, e you know, even with that, you know, Aurora's like, oh, what's what's going on? And he's like, yeah, I can't pull. It's got to be the chosen one, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, yeah, it says it right here. It's crazy that you were able to know, you were able to decipher ancient texts that quickly, you know? And it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> you know? You know, because again, this is a isekai, right? For all intents and purposes. It is, you know, more so, a, you know, probably closer to say it's a reverse isekai. Um, but even that's not quite... 100% accurate, but in its essence, you know, this is an isekai, and this is the only isekai we have currently. I think this was the only one we had pretty much the whole season. I know we started the sword show, um, you know, but that show I felt like was kind of meandering, so that's why I dropped it. Um, so there are isekai tropes, right? Like, that's the whole idea, you know, that's the whole inspiration for the name of this show, not another isekai, right? Because there's isekai have just boomed, and there's so many of them that they all flow together. They're all the same show at this point. You know, it, you know, it really takes something special to separate one isekai from from the pack, right? And every so often, you, you know, I would say at least at least once a season, you know, you get a show like that, and it's great. So this show, I think, did a really good job in the first half. Yeah, I mean, the first half. Not gonna lie, <laughs> where I was like, okay, it's an OP character. He's trying to be a background character, which you know, we've, we, we've seen that before. You know, we've seen OP characters get reincarnated and be like, I'm just going to be a simple farmer. You know, we've we, we've seen this before. But this is kind of interesting because it was more so like fourth wall breaking, almost. Not quite, but but 99% there. And he's like, I'm just going to be a background character. Oh, oh, this person talking to me right now, this person seems like a main character. I got to stay away from them. You know, we, you know, I can't get into adventures with them because then I'll be lumped in and I'll be the main focus. You know, so it... Some of fourth wall breaking, you know, there was, there was some some coolness to it, and, you know, and then even the world itself, like with the shadow garden still being here, like Alpha and Delta and stuff like that, like that was cool, you know. And then Sherry and her whole story, like even the story that he was supposed to be ignoring was somewhat interesting. With the with the way the second half of the show is going, I just feel like it's a different show, you know. Like, I feel like at this point, they, they should have just called this season two. And I feel like I would have been able to wrap my head around it more because we do have the sanctuary and, oh, there's the there's the people that, you know, they were they were basically slaves and they were forced to do this. We have Oliver, who's like number one with that. You know, she, you know, she believed that she was the hero of the generation. But in fact, she was just, you know, getting the Diablo to, you know what I mean? Like, the, there is an interesting story there, but the way it's framed is so different that you know than the way the the previous 10 episodes story was there's just i'm losing interest i'll be honest <laughs> the, the the second half of the show you know i you know i don't know what other you know what everyone else's impressions are what like the general audience impressions are but you know it, it's just like oh there's another story that's happening now it's like oh okay um you know you know you know because we even go further and um you know we still have the old knight there you know delta going crazy killing all the clones that was cool um then the old knight summoning oliver which you think is like a big moment right because that's the way they're setting it up where oliver is the top of the top you know she was the one and she gets there and then shadow garden leaves he's like oh we, we we got the defenses we're leaving and it's like okay okay like did we do we remember what the point of that was the sanctuary you know you know we know sanctuary is like a bad place but they're just leaving now? Okay, 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 okay. And then we have Oliver fighting Shadow, which is like a thing. 
and you know Oliver cut Shadow's sword. Um, you know Shadow was very disappointed because you know Oliver has no heart. You know, just like a, a like husk of a human, and so you know she's not answering any of his questions. You know, um, that was very similar to his fight with Aurora, I believe, when when Aurora got summoned. It was like, oh, you know, a, a a battle is like a conversation. You know what I mean? And so with this one, because she has no heart, she has no soul. It's just, it's just like Aurora's body, basically, or not Aurora, uh, Oliver's body. It's no fun for him, you know. And then, very end, they leave us with a cliffhanger where Oliver stabs Shadow in the gut, and then he says, "Ha ha, gotcha." It's like, all right, cool, 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 cool. So, you know, basically, what I'm trying to say is. <laughs> just if someone understands what's happening and is like no no this show right now is actually really cool i would love for you to explain it to me you know because maybe maybe i'm just dumb and i just uh i just lost it right because you know i i i sort of understand what's happening right we have this whole new storyline with, with with the oliver and the sanctuary and the knights and all that stuff um like, I, 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 I get it, but I don't understand why we're supposed to care, you know, because at the very least with, like, the first arc, it was all based around our main character, you know, and now it doesn't feel like it is. I think that's the difference, where it doesn't feel like the main character even needs to be here, you know, like, it, like, it <laughs> and, you know, you, you could say that's how the first arc was too, but I don't, I don't think so, you know, I feel like the first arc, even though it was you know, Sherry and like her whole thing was, was a very big part of it. This whole thing was still being enacted because of Lord Shadow, you know, because of the Shadow Garden, right? You know, you know, even like the like big bads were pretending to be the Shadow Garden. With this one, it just feels like another story entirely. And Lord Shadow's just here. Like, hey, like he's just in the back seat, you know? So I don't know. Again, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe next episode will prove me wrong and it'll all come together, but we'll see. We'll see. You know, seven episodes left. We're on, we're, we're here at the last, the, the, the final stretch or two thirds of the way. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Next, we have more than a married couple, but not lovers episode 12. This is the final episode of the season. Very excited for this. So, um, this episode gets a little weird, but I think for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. You know, I think last episode was probably the high of it. You know, and, and, you know, I could see a lot of people wishing that last episode was the end, which would have been a crazy ending. <laughs> would have been nuts with the whole Akri and Tenjin conversation and then with the whole Jiro and Shiori situation. Would have been wild. But I understand why they had this, you know, because... You know, last episode was like the climax, and this episode was more like everything's coming down. Well, now it's settling for hopefully a next season. Um, so, Jiro doesn't know how to follow up the kiss. Um, he doesn't really know what to make of it because it happened, and then Shiori kind of does what you expected her to do, where she kind of like shied away and like apologized and was like, "Ah, oh, let's let's go home," <laughs> you know. You know, because she, I mean, you know, she's also super nervous and stuff like, you know, so, um, you know, so, she, so he doesn't really know how to read it. And then you get to when they meet up and Shiori also has no idea what to do now. Um, you know, they're kind of in this weird spot where they sort of confess, right? And I, I was talking about this last week, right? Where they, this is now them confessing without saying anything, but they did confess to each other, but they didn't actually talk about what this means um you know so now they're in this weird spot where they have to talk <laughs> you know and they didn't they didn't at all this episode they didn't actually talk about the elephant in the room they just left him sitting in the corner um you know which i imagine will it's got to happen it's got to happen next season right um then Akari invites Jiro out during summer break which is like a big thing because summer break means they're not doing this for the practical um so, you know, it's just it's just more of Akari sort of being a little more assertive 
and instead of hiding everything she's kind of letting Jiro see the real her like who who she wants to be and who she wants to be with him um which is cool and you know basically the whole episode is them going out just doing a bunch of fun stuff right like they um they go to like her favorite like cafe place um they go to a cat place which is super cool um they uh, let's see what else did they do i don't know do a bunch of other stuff <clears throat> and, and, and it's fun you know they're they're having a good time the whole time jiro you know because jiro's just like oh, i don't know why she would invite me blah blah, blah. but it's just like dude she's inviting you because she wants us to hang out with you like this isn't this isn't we're not doing school so it's not it's not getting points for the practical you know what i mean like there's no like tension underlying thing you know she just wants to hang out with you you know like it's not <laughs> it's not like super hard to wrap your head around um and then akari and shuri are racing to the shrine this is basically the end of the episode uh kind of weird <laughs> kind of uh you know beat you over the head with how metaphorical the race is you know you know because they're racing to the shrine it is a shrine mostly used for like romantic uh divinations <laughs> you know um but then also as they're racing oh they see they see two a, a boy and a girl who are kids and they're hanging out and then we see a like a like a high school couple and then we see um a you know two people coming out just being married and then we see a a a adult couple with a kid and then an adult couple with an older kid and it's just like all right <laughs> all right guys we get it you know they're they're seeing all the stages of <clears throat> all the stages of a relationship um you know it's it's supposed to be metaphorical of what they would want you know, the reason they're racing, they're racing to Jiro's heart, you know, like that, that, you know, that sort of thing. And then they get to the top and there's a couple and the guy, the couple, it's an elderly couple and the guy's name is Jiro. And it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's it, 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 beating you over the head with it is an understatement. They, it's, it's, it's like a truck, <laughs> the, 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 the metaphorical truck just kills you and then and then you get reincarnated and that's that's an isekai um but yeah and then they like pray or whatever and jiro's like wait isn't isn't this big on like romantic stuff and it's like oh you know and then he starts to to pray and it's like ah oh, what does he what does he want you know and then the episode ends and then we get a little bit of a uh post-credit scene um just kind of jiro and akari hanging out doing stuff um, I guess with the start of the next year, um, and, um, well, wait, hold on, do they still live together, wait, hold on, I just have a quick, quick question, but, you know, before we get to the, the, the very end, um, this episode, so it is summer break, which means that they're not, right? They're not together. Oh, well, well, I mean, it's so it's it, it, it's summer break, which means school is not in session. But they still live in the practical houses because Shiori, when Shiori invited Jiro to her place this episode, they went to her like practical home, you know, you, you know, because you know, because well, they all look the same, but also she had the little fingerprint thing on her door. Unless there was a time jump <laughs> that I'm missing. That like the, the, the Shiro and Jiro stuff happened and then it time jumped to summer and then we had the Akri and Jiro stuff. Interesting. Because now we're thinking of this post credit scene where Akri and Jiro are together and they're in their practical home. So that they must have cut back to like a time jump to the beginning of school again, right? Because then, and then, you know, I guess what reinforces that, that idea is that the, you know, the big thing here is that, um, the like TV in the main communal place turns on and we see that both couples have an A rank and then it ends. And that's huge because that was kind of their whole goal. 
right, was that, I mean, I don't know that Shiori was necessarily, like, super driving at that, but I do know that, uh, you know, Akari and Joe were obviously, you know, really, really wanted that because the whole original plan was for them to switch, and so that Akari and Tenjin can be together, and now Shiori and Jiro can be together. This is a big cliffhanger, a lot of stuff to think about of what's going to happen now, because, again, I don't think a second season is confirmed. I would like one, very much like one. I, you know, I hope this show did well. I hope the manga, you know, got raised, <laughs> you know, all its, all its sales and stuff like that, um, because now we have some theories, right? Because they can now switch. They can switch. Um... But do we think that's actually going to happen, right? I love you know. I love to know what what you guys think because at this point it's like, I mean, Akari already talked, and you know I don't think she told Jiro this. Um, you know, even if she did, you know, I you know I don't think she would tell him about like the part of why where she likes him. Um, but Akari and Tenjin already talked, and like that's not happening. <laughs> Tenjin does not like her like that and Akira has realized that she does not like him like that like she thought she might have before but she doesn't anymore she likes they both have a very clear understanding that Tenjin likes someone else and Akira likes Jiro <laughs> so no reason for them to switch for for either of them to want to switch for their own personal gain Jiro and Shuri different situation they do like each other Shuri 100% likes Jiro Jiro um, was talking about how like she, he he pretty much gave up on her, um, you know like halfway gave up on being with her, and then they kissed. The problem is that they like each other, but they haven't confessed to each other. What's gonna happen? And we also know that I mean, come on, Jiro has feelings for Akari clearly, and you know I feel like those feelings, if they haven't already, they are beginning to eclipse his feelings for Shiori. I still think he has feelings for Shiori. But they are eclipsing because there are a couple moments, even when he is hanging out with Shiori, where he is thinking of Akari. So it's like, uh, you know, you know, but then we get to both of their selflessness, where it's like, could Akari switch? You know, if if Jiro doesn't make any sort of moves towards her, towards Akari, will Akari just say, well, you know, even though I don't you know, me and Tenjin aren't going to be together. Jiro doesn't like me like that, but he does like Shiori, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna request that we switch. Same thing on Jiro's side, you know, where, you know, where Jiro maybe isn't sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, at this point, he's like, oh, I don't, I don't really think that, you know, Shiori, you know, oh, too many names. I don't really think that Jiro, <laughs> oh, there's too many names, too many names, too many names. Okay, what I was trying to say is, then on Jiro's side, he could be like, man, I don't really think that Akari likes me like that. Again, he doesn't know about that conversation. So in his mind, he still thinks that Akari wants tension. And in his mind, he's like, okay, well, if he was going to be truly, truly true to himself, I think he would realize both feelings. But he'd be like, well, you know, Akari likes tension. Me and Shuri, I guess, sort of have this thing going. You know, we should maybe talk about it, blah, blah, blah. So let's switch. You know, so it's crazy. You know, we're in this weird, like, love quadrilateral where some of the pieces aren't reciprocating other pieces. And then some pieces have multiple, multiple angles. <laughs> it's just like, oh, geez. What, what needs to happen is that somebody just needs to come clean, you know. And I realize you could say, oh, well, didn't she already do that? Yes, but they haven't talked about it. That's the thing. It has to be a conversation. It has to be a conversation, you know, because that thing happening with Shuri and Jiro, there, there has to be some follow-up, you know? This isn't... <laughs> okay. Everyone, if you haven't seen Love is War yet, you know, uh, Love is War, I think there's like three seasons out. Go watch it. It is incredible. It's incredible, incredible show, um, but I am going to spoil it uh, slightly. I'm, you know, I'm going to try to be vague, but there are two characters in Love Is War who 
a similar thing happens where they where they kiss and that's like and, and you're thinking in your head like first off you're thinking finally jesus and then second you're thinking does that count as a confession though like they kiss that's great they're reciprocating that's great but they have to have like a conversation about it like hey so we're like we're like together or was that just like a thing that happened you know and then by the end of like you know the end of that whole situation with that show they're like holding hands and stuff so it's like okay they're they're together cool all right awesome with this we're, we're gonna jump back to this show more than a married couple but not lovers um you know jiro and shori kissed but they didn't talk about it afterwards like they're still acting weird around each other you know they're still acting like friends you know they're not you know they're not acting like a couple so they, they have to talk because if, if if that's all that happens then they're not together <laughs> you know like they like uh, you know it's, it's not a thing so, you know so i think that's what what has to happen is that they have to speak or akari has to i mean that's you know it's really you know kind, you know kind of what akari and Tenjin's conversation was where it's like akari knows that jiro likes shiori but they're not together even with that kiss they're not together so it is a race it's like hey you you have to make your move before shiori does or before you know because at this point jiro's not gonna like he's just not going to he's, he's he, you know he, he's just not that person um he's like super unsure of himself right so it's a race but in, in you know there's the whole metaphorical race that the, <laughs> the literal and metaphorical race in this episode is like you are racing like you have to make your move before she does she uh, well i was gonna say that that she always in the lead but again going back to the literal and metaphorical race where they tie I would say they're kind of even because even though Shiori has that on Akari, Akari like lived with him, and like she, you know, you know, you know, that was the whole point of the kiss, right? Where Shiori was like, Akari knows this other side of you, like knows all these different things about you that I don't know, you know. So I feel like th that was her way to not get ahead but be on the same footing now. So I don't know, man. I hope there's another season. If there isn't, if another season never comes out, I would say go read the manga because the manga is incredible. Um, but yeah. Next, we have Chainsaw Man, episode 12. This is the final episode of the season. Boy, let me tell you. Did, did, did stuff happen? <laughs> um, so, the ghost devil gives Aki a cigarette that says, easy revenge. You know, so that's kind of, uh, you know, from Himeno, right? We have the cigarette, we have... Uh, you know, we cut back to the one scene where she, like, gives him cigarettes, and we get a little more of it, where that actually isn't the moment where Aki takes his first cigarette, because Aki mentions that he's underage, and she's like, oh, you're underage? Well, obviously you can't smoke, give it to me, give it back, <laughs> you know, so Himeno, not, not completely irresponsible, <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, but she does save it, right, she says, I'm gonna save this, right, for when you're, you're of age. Um, so you imagine that that cigarette is the one that she wrote Easy Revenge on. Um, so that's to him. So that's a nice thing there. Um, Aki is able to kill the ghost devil because I guess like he says something like, oh, the ghost devil doesn't have eyes. So it, it sees with fear. And so I guess Aki at that point isn't afraid of the ghost devil anymore. Awesome. Awesome end to that fight. Um, you know, you know, less of like a like a physical fight and more of a character growth like you know aki won this through character growth and development and through you know his relationship with aki or not aki uh himeno so that was cool that was cool i like that um and also just destroyed uh what was her name akane where akane was like oh no <laughs> so that was cool um and then we have denji and power <laughs> power is this is a great moment where where power comes up on the zombies and Denji's like, hey, they don't see us yet. You know, let's maybe like sneak around them or something. You know, there you know there's a way for us to do this. And power's like, huh, yeah, okay. And then she announces herself and starts, you know, she you know she wants to fight all of them, and she's like, you got my back, Denji. And then Denji lets the elevator doors close, and goes up to a different floor. <laughs> And the whole time, Power has no idea. Power's just demolishing these zombies, which is cool. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a funny moment there. Um, and then, you know, Denji and the guy, I don't remember his name. I, you know, I guess it's Samurai Sword. I always said Machete because 
the swords seem so like thick, you know, like machetes are very thick. Samurai sword to me, I don't, I don't, I don't see it's like, like a, a like thicker sword. Um, but I guess maybe it's just scaled up, you know, because they're like huge just in nature. Um, that's probably what's happening. But uh, yeah, so they have their little conversation, and this 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 is ridiculous, right? Because his his, his whole argument here is that you killed like this dude's uncle and you killed my granddad or something, right? You killed them. So now you, you have to atone for that. And at that point, it's like full stop. Hold on a second. You, you, <laughs> you tried to kill me. What do you mean? Just like a few days ago or whatever. I don't, I don't remember exactly when it was a few weeks ago, whatever a month ago. I don't know. You tried to kill me and take my heart. What? What do you, what? You not only attacked me, but you attacked all my friends. The only people I, I deem as friends. I guess Makima wasn't there, but you know what I mean? You, you guys attacked every one of my people. You killed the, 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 the one guy. Uh, well, not, not him specifically, but you and your people. Like, we, what? I have to atone. My, mine was revenge. <laughs> You know, for, you know, first off, if anything, I, I, I get to seek some revenge for you. And like, Jimeno's dead because of you. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean a tone? And then after that, it's like, but, but they were zombies. Like, like, what do you, like, they weren't people. Like, like at that point they were already dead and they came back as zombies. And then his argument is, yeah, but those zombies used to be people. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Cool. All right. This is the same energy I immediately thought of um, in The Walking Dead, um, in like season, when when do they get her? I think it's the prison season, so season three, unless they meet her in season two, I don't remember exactly, it's it's like, it's, it's, a, it's around season three or something. Um, the Walking Dead, for anyone who doesn't know, is a, is a live action zombie show, um, probably the biggest zombie show ever that ever existed um has like a million spinoffs i'm a big fan um you know it it fell off at a certain point and got better and then there's spinoffs and the spinoffs are of you know mixed quality i don't i don't know we, that's a whole other thing we're not here to talk about walking dead but um the reason i bring it up is because there was a character it was a girl child character who her like big thing was she didn't see zombies as zombies she saw them more as just like like they're still people they're just like sick or whatever you know they just have like a, a condition you know there's something seriously wrong with her <laughs> something seriously wrong with her um and every time she was on screen like in, in the beginning you could kind of chalk it up as like oh she's a kid she's just an ignorant kid but after everyone around you was like you're wrong like zombies well in, in that show they're not called zombies they're called walkers these like the like that walker will kill you <laughs> you know but like she you know she's like over here like feeding them and like playing with them and stuff and it's like they're going to kill you like stop like this is your like you know so it's it's a whole thing right that like that character is one of the most frustrating characters to watch on screen because it's like it, it they're not humans with a condition like like they used to be human they're not coming back <laughs> you know like if, if, if that walk like you can't just play tag with a walker because guess what if it gets you it's not your it it's your dead <laughs> so it's very frustrating character so i bring that up because that is kind of what's happening here where you know again i you know you know i don't think he's delusional but you know he is upset you know so but just his, his argument is stupid he's like oh but it used to be a person like you know don't you feel bad about killing it it's like no like <laughs> they're dead they are reanimated and they're not your family anymore like it is a zombie what are you talking about um and so he's like very well kill him <laughs> it's just like what do you like like the, the whole argument doesn't make any sense you know because they're zombies, you know? Even if they weren't zombies, even if Denji did murder your family member, it's like, you attacked me? All of my friends, one of them is dead. <laughs> one of them 
his his lifespan got severely reduced trying to save Emeno. You like cut me in half. <laughs> like what do you what do you you have to atone? You have to atone. <laughs> no, you. You know what I mean? Like it's so irritating, you know? And and then they fight, and it is it is one of the best fights of the entire show. Um, so far, probably, probably the best one, you know, I think an argument could be made that it's the best one. Um, you know, they're like a mix of 2D and 3D here is executed very well. Um, especially once they get on the, on, on, on the elevator, that, or not the elevator, the, the train, that, that was really cool. Um, and, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh yeah, and we have a, a, you know, funny comedic moment in there where he uses this move, this like ninja move. And that chops off Denji's arm. And Denji's like, man, can can we just ban that move, please? <laughs> the move is so annoying. You know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. And he does it again, chops off his other arm. Um, goes for the head that time. Chops off his head. Or his, like, uh, his, like head chainsaw. And then Denji's like, you have, you have activated my trap card. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had, it, it, you know, there's, like, the reveal that he has chainsaws on his, like, legs and knees and stuff. And it cuts back to Samurai Man. Samurai Man falls in two pieces. So it's like, you're a fool. You know? And that's that's cool, because that is kind of uh, showing his growth. Um, sh you know, reaping the benefits of him dying a million times to the teacher. Um, you, know, you know, him and Power were training with the teacher. And, you know, uh, that's just showing how much, how much better of a fighter he is, but also how much more he's thinking when he's fighting. You know, like he was able to think of that move and be like, okay, I know what he's going to do. So I'm going to counterattack, basically, uh, which the old Denji might not have ever thought of that. The old Denji might have just went, you know, fire versus, you know, fight fire with fire. Nah, that, that was never going to work. Um, yeah. um, and then what else do we have? So they catch him. Denji proposes a torture contest, which is really funny, you know, because, hey, this, this is the guy that killed Domeno, you know. Um, Aki at first doesn't want to do it because of his heart of gold, but then he's like, looks at the cigarette, says easy revenge, and he's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> then we have a, a funny little montage there where they are, they're torturing this man. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it, it feels good because it's like, yeah, this guy sucks. <laughs> um, and then, um, then we get some like sort of post credit -y stuff. Uh, we have, Akane, who was the girl, um, you know, who, who was like the main girl with the samurai man who was after Denji's heart. Um, but the gun devil killed her before she, she was able to be interrogated. Right. So, you know, the, the thought process there is that that was part of her like contract with the gun devil where it's like, hey, if you ever get caught, like you're like caught, caught. Then you're going to die, <laughs> you know, we have another devil out there come in, kill you you know, assisted suicide, basically, so that it is impossible for you to give up any of my secrets. Um, very, very smart, very smart by the gun devil, very much uh, thinking ahead. Um, and man, ride or die, huh? Uh, uh, can I? <laughs> ride or die with that, huh? Um, and, um, but now a good thing is they now have enough of the gun devil's flesh that, you know, the, the mass is so large that now the mass of flesh itself is now moving towards the main body because before we just had like little pieces and they and they would kind of attract other pieces but now the the the, the amount the i don't know the chunk that they have is not moving towards other pieces it's moving back towards the main body which is amazing you know this is a huge huge progress you know because now they know where it's going and now they're like, all right we're gonna go find the gun devil we're here um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, Aki smokes the easy revenge cigarette, you know, that's symbolic in some way. Um, you know, he kind of got his revenge. Um, but also, I mean, on, on Jimeno, he kind of got as much revenge as he can get on Jimeno. Um, but, you know, re revenge is like a big thing for him because that's the whole reason he is a devil hunter, right? Because he is trying to get revenge on the devil. Um, we're assuming that's a gun devil, right? that killed his family so there's that um pochita is behind denji's dream door 
we've, we've seen the dream door a couple times so far um and we see pochita is behind that door um and then he like warns denji like hey you can't you can't open that door yet or something um i've read the manga i have told i do not remember the significance of the door don't remember it at all um but but it was teased here so i imagine we're gonna get more of it next season um and then lastly uh there's a little quote at the very very end spoken by a female character we don't see her face we see a little bit of her hair uh, her legs uh but we don't see her i don't remember who she is i really don't um couldn't tell you <laughs> You know, I was making guesses like, oh, is that like Jimeno's back? Or maybe that's the other girl, Devil Hunter. Like, no, that doesn't make sense. It's Makima. No, it's not Makima. Don't know who it is. <laughs> um, but uh, she says, tell me, Denji, between the country mouse and the city mouse, which would you rather be? And then it cuts the credits. She like enters a cafe or something and it cuts the credits. Um, don't know what that means. I'm sure that'll come back around. I'm sure that was spoken for a reason. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you what the meaning of that is. But, um, yeah. I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure she'll be a very important character next season. Because why why put it in there if there's no significance? Um, but, yeah, that is the end of Chainsaw Man this season. Um, still a ton. Like, we're talking manga content. A ton, ton more stuff to go through. So, um, I imagine, again, you know, Chainsaw Man is one of the biggest anime of the year, I would say probably gonna be on many people's anime of the year um so i imagine it'll get more seasons like i can't i can't see them being like oh one season's enough what you have to at least get through the the first part of the manga come on um so yeah i imagine we'll get another thing they haven't i don't know if they confirmed anything but uh you know mappa mappa's crazy man you know mappa's just <laughs> mappa works on like three shows a year and they're all like blockbuster shows like, next season, which is one we're going to watch, is Vinland Saga. And that's, like, the most anticipated show of the year. Or of the, of the of the season. Of the winter 2023. So, you guys are crazy. Um, but, yeah. It's in the Chainsaw Man. I love it, you know. Um, and we'll see. You know, it's, it's, it's really setting up a good next season. Because, obviously, the goal of the season was to find the gun devil. But now, now they have a lead. Like, a real lead. It's like, okay... We, we know we know where it's heading towards we know where the main body should be so next season man you know next season we, we might see some gun devil i don't know um and then last show we got is momo Su gundam the witch from mercury episode 12 which is the final episode and we're gonna have to keep waiting we're gonna have to keep waiting this is the other show that got delayed um so very sad you all know how much i love this show I'd really like to watch the final episode, but uh, I got delayed, so I'll have to wait till next week, next week for that, sadly, I'm sure, I hope it'll be worth it, I'm sure it will be, and then that is it, not another isekai for this week, like I said, shortest episode, we're not even at an hour yet, um, but yeah, good stuff, good stuff, we finished a few shows today, um, next week, you might say, man, next week's gonna be pretty late too, I'm um, not so sure about that, you know, so next week, unless stuff gets, unless, you know, barring any more delays, uh, we will cover My Hero Academia, Blue Lock, Eminence in Shadow, uh, Witch for Mercury, but also I believe there's a good, like, four shows, maybe more, that are, uh, their first episode is dropping between now and then, so we will be maybe starting a bunch of shows next, next week. So that'll be fun. Um, you know, just, just kind of check that out. You know, if you go to my anime list, um, you know, you know, you know, each show does a list when it's airing. So just go check that out, you know, and, you know, make sure to see, you know, if you didn't, um, if you didn't watch it, uh, last episode, um, well, the, the last episode that I put out was actually sort of like a bonus episode, like a, you know, I think I named it like episode 9.5 <laughs> and, uh, that is when I went through my kind of preview of the winter 2023 season. Um, that is basically, you know, you know, kind of also acts as me saying which shows I'm going to try to cover next season. Um, you know, obviously some of the shows I might drop. Uh, there might be shows that I pick up. But uh, yeah, go, you know, go watch that and you'll know exactly what shows I'm watching. And uh, yeah, 
good stuff there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know what you thought of some of these endings. Let me know any sort of like theories for next seasons. You know, I think there's some pretty good ones. <laughs> um, you know, let me know what shows that you have an eye on for next season. Um, and yeah, until next time, watch more anime. Mm-hmm.